So our final speaker for today is Yutan Dikte. Yeah, so uh, thank you for uh, coming to my talk. Today I want to tell you about a very important uh, computational problem called unique games and its connection to uh, harness of approximation. Um, so first of all, uh, I'm going to tell you about computational problems. These are just problems which we want an algorithm to solve for us. Um, today I'm going to focus on this very wide and expressive class of computational problems called constraint satisfaction problems or CSPs. These are basically just problems where we take as input a bunch of variables and constraints on these variables. And as output, we want to find an assignment to the variables that will satisfy as many constraints as possible. Um, so maybe just one quick example of such a problem. Um, the max three set problem is a problem where we take as input some variables x1 to xn and a bunch of constraints, which are these disjunctions between three variables or their negations. So something that looks like this x1 or not x2 or x5 and so on. And in this case, we want to find an assignment from the variables to true or false that will satisfy as many of these constraints as possible. Um, maybe some of you know like the decision version of this problem where you need to uh, just determine whether all the constraints could be simultaneously satisfied or not. This is sort of the search version. Um, so in general, there are of course many other examples of these problems. We can talk about best solutions to a bunch of linear equations maybe, and also more exotic tasks like finding um, dense cuts in graphs, allocating resources subject to arbitrary constraints and so on and so forth. Um, and also the problem that I want to tell you about today is a constraint satisfaction problem. This is the unique games problem. Um, this is just a CSP where we take as input uh, uh, some finite field, FQ, uh, a bunch of variables, and now our constraints are just going to be these, sorry, these linear equations where uh, every equation contains exactly two variables. So very simple linear equations. Um, our goal, find an assignment for the variables to the uh, input field that will satisfy as many of these equations as possible. Um, just a quick example, so we'll stay on the same page. For example, we could take as input this field F5 for variables in these four equations. Um, in this case, we'd like to output an assignment like this, which will satisfy three out of the four uh, equations, the three green ones. Uh, you can check by Gaussian elimination that all four uh, equations couldn't be satisfied simultaneously. So this is sort of the best assignment possible. Um, so a very fundamental question in, uh, um, in uh, complexity is for which CSPs we have an efficient algorithm that solves them. Um, when I say efficient, I mean runs in polynomial time in the size of the input or number of variables. But if you're not from TCS, just think of an algorithm that runs much, much faster than the one that just tries out all possible assignments and outputs the best one, okay? Um, so this is maybe somewhat of a naive version of this question because in fact, for many uh, CSP problems that interest us, for example, this max reset problem, we actually know that they are NP-hard, which in layman terms means that we strongly believe that there shouldn't be such an algorithm that solves them. So we somewhat try to relax this question and ask for the best, next best thing, which is uh, finding an approximate best solution. Um, so think about a situation where maybe we're getting some, you know, payoff for each constraint we satisfy, and maybe if we can't find the absolute best solution, you know, very efficiently, we sometimes are okay with finding a solution that's like performing almost as good as the best. So with this in mind, um, let's define an approximation algorithm. So an approximation algorithm or an alpha approximation algorithm for a certain CSP <clears throat> is just an algorithm that takes as input, you know, our favorite uh, uh, instance of a CSP problem, and it outputs an assignment that satisfies alpha times whatever the best uh, assignment possible could have satisfied. So I don't know if the best assignment could have satisfied 100 constraints and alpha is 0 0.9, the algorithm should guarantee us an assignment that satisfies at least 90 constraints. Um, so I think this is a very natural notion and a slightly more sophisticated version of the question that we asked before is for which CSPs and which constants alpha we have a, a efficient alpha approximation algorithms. So just to give you maybe a, a taste of a, a theorem in this field, um, Hostad told us in uh, 2001 that for the max reset problem that uh, I told you about before, 
there is a very efficient and also very simple seven over eight approximation algorithm um, that's just basically, you know, randomly sampling assignments. Um, but for any alpha greater than seven over eight, in fact, it, it, we cannot find an efficient or polynomial time approximation algorithm, unless, of course, P is equal to NP, which we do not believe. Um, but I mean, of course, you know, you can maybe uh, uh, change this uh, CSP slightly, and already this becomes a new problem, right? So instead of max reset, we can actually ask what kind of theorem can we make for any possible CSP? Now, CSPs, as I told you before, you know, you see that they come in all these different flavors. Some involve linear algebra, some involve logic, some involve, you know, wild stuff. So you might expect that for any constraint satisfaction problem, we should actually sort of tailor an algorithm that will work best for that problem and that problem only. Um, whereas maybe, you know, uh, someone could maybe think very aspiringly that there is a more general approach that will actually give us, you know, maybe one algorithm or one family of algorithms that will work for all of them. Um, so the next thing that I want to do is to tell you about a, a, the unique games conjecture, which is a conjecture that involves this unique games problem, which I told you about, that is going to give us actually an answer for this question for all the CSPs, of course, if it is true. So the unique games conjecture was uh, conjectured by Cott in 2002, and it says this, um, for every epsilon uh, greater than zero, the following problem is NP-hard. Uh, the input to this problem is just a unique games instance as before, and that denotes uh, the number of equations in by K. And what we want to do is not even output a good assignment. We just want to distinguish between two situations. We want to output yes, if there is an assignment that satisfies a one minus epsilon fraction of all the equations, and we want to output no, if any assignment that we give on the variables will not satisfy more than an epsilon fraction of the equations. So think of this epsilon as like 1% or something like that. We really want to distinguish between these two faraway cases. Um, let me just note that this is sort of a promise problem. So I don't know if epsilon is 1% and like we have an input where the best assignment satisfies 50% of the equation. So we're not in any of these two, then we don't really care what the algorithm will output. So uh, the unique games conjecture said that for any epsilon as small as uh, we want to take it, this problem is still empty hard. Um, there is there nothing about how many variables are there? Um, so you say that there are k equations, so this says something about the number of variables. But it can be. But, but uh, I mean, technically there can be many more, but if there are k equations, you know, you can't see more than 2k variables in the equations. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a good question. Um, so where does this unique game conjecture come up? There is a very uh, uh, strong and very uh, breaking uh, uh, result by Raghavendra that was given in 2008 that says that if this conjecture is true, then there is one single algorithm that is actually the best uh, uh, efficient approximation algorithm to all the CSP problems at once. I'm kind of sweeping some details here under the rug, but basically Raghavendra shows that for any type of CSP problem we can think about, there is some constant alpha star so that Raghavendra's algorithm gives us an alpha star approximation algorithm for input from that CSP. But for any alpha greater than that alpha star, there is in fact no efficient alpha approximation algorithm for that CSP. So this in fact gives a very strong and very uh, uh, general result that I think is beautiful. I don't have so much time to get into the history of this uh, uh, result, but let me just say that this didn't come out of the air. There was actually a long line of work starting by Cot's conjecture uh, uh, itself that sort of connected unique games to wider and wider uh, uh, CSPs up until this like very general result. Um, so is the conjecture true or not? Uh, of course, it's a conjecture, so I don't know what to say. So I thought I'd maybe give us some evidence for its truthfulness and fullfulness, and we can decide for ourselves what we believe. Um, you say it's about the existence of this alpha star, but can one can compute it? Uh, yes, yeah, so so one can uh, uh, um, one can compute it uh, uh, at least for uh, uh, maybe all CSPs, like not too crazy. Um, yeah. Um, 
So here's some evidence for this uh, unique games conjecture. First of all, one might suspect that the fact that there is linear algebra involved may uh, make this problem actually quite easy because we're used to thinking of linear algebra as kind of simple computationally. But Hosted already tells us that if we take a, a three variables instead of two variables in this problem, this problem is in fact empty hard. So we do not expect a, 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 a efficient algorithms for it. Um, another theorem that is uh, highly non-trivial by uh, all these authors here say that a, a slightly weaker variant of this conjecture also holds true where you replace this one minus epsilon a, a promise with a half minus epsilon. Even if you're not following exactly what this means, like the one minus and the half minus, this is just saying that a weaker ver version of this conjecture holds true. And we may suspect that we can sort of push this half all the way up to one. Um, as for evidence uh, against, this problem kind of doesn't behave like uh, uh, other anti-hard problems that uh, uh, we might think about. First of all, uh, uh, we know of a sub-exponential time algorithm for actually solving uh, uh, unique uh, games, which is a behavior, again, which we don't expect from anti-hard problems. Uh, I'm not gonna get into the exact statement here because it's kind of complex, but while it doesn't refute the fact it is anti-hard, it does say something about how a reduction is supposed to look like to this problem. So maybe a reason to why this is complicated to prove. Um, also, without getting into this too much, because they don't have too much time, um, there is also sort of no hardness results, even for weaker models of computations, such as these very natural semi-definite programs uh, called sum of squares, where for many other constraint satisfaction problems, it is actually very simple to show in this model, like unconditional hardness. So these are maybe two evidence uh, uh, why this problem, uh, why this conjecture may not be true as stated. Um, so finally, in the last minute or two of my talk, um, I'd like to tell you briefly about another sort of related problem that I uh, have been talking about uh, with Ali recently. So if you're interested, uh, uh, feel free uh, uh, to tell me. Um, this is basically a problem uh, which I call a local decoding algorithm for unique games, but you can state it like this. Um, what additional assumptions do we have to make on this unique games input so that not only we can solve it easily, but in fact, we can sort of solve it without even looking at most of the equations. Um, without saying exactly what the model of computation is, maybe let me state something. Basically, we want to perform a task where we take as input a unique game, which we already know or assume that there is some good solution solving most of the equations. And also somebody gives us a single distinguished uh, uh, variable. And our goal in this task is just to recover the solution's value on that single variable. But the crux is, is that we don't really want to look at most of the equations, only on you know, a vanishing fraction or a sublinear uh, number of these equations. Um, so just to say where this is coming from, you can maybe think about a scenario where somebody has some solution that they like in advance and they are sort of encoding it by a, a, a unique game's a, a set of equations. But this maybe encoding is kind of corrupted. So maybe, you know, this becomes not an exact solution to this uh, set of equations, but kind of a noise solution. And this problem is sort of trying to decode uh, uh, the solution in a way where for one value, I don't really have to look at all the equations, but like on much less. Um, again, without going into uh, uh, applications, let me just say that we believe that there should be applications to this problem in uh, uh, areas of like local decodable codes or localist decodable codes, and consequentially in uh, uh, complexity theory in problems like hardness of amplification. Um, and I think I will finish here. <laughs> Well, you haven't convinced me which way to vote. Yeah, I <laughs> I don't want to talk about religion, so I'm not going to say that. <laughs> yeah. Why is it called unique games? Oh, yeah. Um, ignore the games part of unique games. It's kind of uh, for historic reasons. But the unique part is because every linear equation contains two variables. So if you know one variable and you know the equation is true, it sort of uniquely determines the other variable. And so I didn't get into this, but there are like connections to these propagation algorithms where, you know, you believe truthness of one thing and you sort of propagate it uniquely. Um, although there is some noise in the process. Um, 
is the last part equivalent to direct sum equalistic or de-randomized direct sum? Um, so that's a good question. I don't have the uh, I don't have an exact theorem yet, but uh, I believe uh, something of this sort should be applicable. Um, but I don't know. Okay, so let's thank you, Tom.